the Mark II BMW 1 Series. Some may say this is the best 1 Series year to date, and for anyone who states that, I totally agree with you. Since the automotive industry is headed into a bit of a quiet, dreary, electric future, when are you ever going to get hatchback with a great chassis and his rear wheel drive? In fact, I like the F21 series that much that it's my second time reviewing it, but this time it's the 118i, the one I like. But well, first off, I want to give a big shout out to the owner of this car, Nick, for lending it me for half the day so I could do this review. Like usual, I will leave his handles in the description box below. Please, if you do have any questions on long-term BMW 1 Series ownership, to send him a message and a follow as well. And so back to the review, I'm starting underneath the bonnet because this car has a three cylinder engine. And to add to that, there are a bunch of different engines you could choose from in the model range. So for example, it starts off with the three cylinder and then you go up to the four cylinder with the 120i and 125i or the diesel models. And then you've got the big halo car, the 140i with the big six cylinder engine. And you can certainly tell that BMW manufactured this big bonnet for that big six cylinder engine because there's loads of unnecessary gaps and spaces in this engine bay alone. Anyway, this kindly brings me on to this car and the model variant I have in front of me is the 2019 BMW 118i Shadow Edition with the 1.5 litre petrol engine that's currently pushing 134 brake horsepower and 162 pounds foot of torque all to the rear wheels. If you're interested, the 0 to 60 times in this car is 8.5 seconds, but the B38 engine has extreme tuning potential. So for example, this one's actually stage one tuned, raising it up to 189 brake horsepower. Nonetheless, this car has a proper handbrake, no electronic gobbins, and an amazing manual gearbox, which we'll get onto later on in the video. So what about the design? Well, in person, you start to notice that the bonnet in proportion to the rest of the car is huge, and it gives it that nice manly stance to it. In addition, I prefer this generation of styling compared to the new car by a mile, although the rear section of the new car does look more superior. I don't know guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As for the rear seats, this is probably where the One Series lacks, let's just say. The door opening is in a really awkward position and the space in the back is really limited due to this transmission tunnel. I'll be honest, I've sat in the back of many F20s before with two rear passengers and it is extremely cramped, but at least you get these foldable headrests that fold down with a button. How cool is that? Jumping over to the main bit of the interior and as expected from German cars, the materials feel absolutely incredible. In the Shadow Edition model, you get these really soft leather seats. And I reviewed a BMW 1160 a couple of years ago. That video will appear in the top right hand banner. And that car with the M Sport package had half cloth, half Alcantara seats, and it just started to discolor after a couple of years of use. So make sure to go for leather seats. As for interior storage, it's pretty reasonable. There's plenty of places where you can store many of your items. But the thing that interests me is the fact that this car has four 12 volt sockets, one up front in the dash, one in the rear seats, one in the boot, and one underneath the glove compartment in the most hidden spot ever. Dash cam users, meet your new place to plug in your device. Another feature in the 2019 BMW 1 Series are these touch sensitive buttons. And what I mean by that is, if you rest your finger on one of these numbers, it should show you what the number is assigned to. And you could assign whatever you want to it. So a radio station or for it to open your gate, whatever you really want. Anyway, I think it's time we went for a drive. Okay people, now let's go for a little drive and instantly I've been reminded of the last time I drove one of these and how strange it was. The fact that the pedals are so offset to the right and I have to twist my body towards them and the vast amount of road noise that you get compared to its rivals. But this car wasn't built for the intentions for it to be plain and for all your rear passengers to be happy because they've got loads of uh, rear seat leg room. And yes, the engine isn't mind-bendingly quick, but I tell you what, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I'm just currently in Eco Pro mode, which is one of the settings in the iDrive system. And in the instrument cluster, it actually gives you a number to show you how many miles you've saved. So I've currently saved six miles. And um, it does actually use some clever systems as well to limit the amount of AC that's coming out. On the topic of blue stuff, in the Shadow Edition model, you get these dark blue sporty M Sport calipers. 
uh, with the M Sport badge on them, of course. Uh, and it looks really nice against diamond cut alloys and also this black paint job. I've got to say, it is to my taste. This as a Aston Martin Vantage drives by. What a car. Oh, can you guys hear that? Woohoo! Is it a V? Is it a V? Is it a V12? Is it a V8? Not too sure. I've also noticed that the rear doors protrude out a lot compared to other cars. Uh, so if you do have rear passengers, make sure they are kind of aware of that, so they don't swing the door into into a wall and pretty much damage your paint job. You've also got so many modes in this car. You've got Eco Pro mode, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus. When it turns off the traction control, which I like. I mean. I don't know which one you're going to choose at the end of the day. First world problem. This engine, it doesn't make a lot of noise, but I tell you what, this car has got a stage one on it. 189 brake horsepower on a stage one. The power increase is, is absolutely mental. The internals on this car are really capable as well and really strong, so it could handle it. Now, in my old 3 Series review, I mentioned that I didn't like the orange dials. And to be honest, if someone commented and they were like, yeah, I, I, I like them, I miss them. It, it's unique to BMWs. And I do agree with them actually. And now they swapped it over to this half digital, half analog dials. I'm kind of just, uh, I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite, but I might prefer the orange dials over this new display. I don't know. I've also noticed on the instrument cluster when you put the speed limiter on, a little green light appears at the speed you've set it at. And when you first turn it on, it, it does this little flicker, almost, and it looks pretty funny. I'll bring up a video of it right here. The iDrive system is, is really smooth as well. It gives you weather information, etc., news, whatever you want. I would use Apple CarPlay, but I'm not too sure if this car actually has Apple CarPlay as it's a 225 pound option. The handling is fantastic. The steering wheel, I've said this before, but the M Sport steering wheel feels great. It is, it is the best. It is the best. Sod the Golf, sod the Audi. The gearbox, even though uh, the manual gearbox is great in the BMW 1 Series and the F20 generation, I just feel like the throws are a little bit too long. I just need a shorter throw. So like something like a short shifter. If you install that as a modification, that'd be great. For a hatchback, it's really big. Don't forget this car weighs 1.3 tons. And for that, you only get 360 liters of boot space. And that's really small compared to like an Audi A4. I love how big the mirrors are in this car as well. It, it does help with trying to maneuver uh, near curbs. You don't want to be curving these expensive alloys, diamond cut alloys, which probably are a pain to refurb. So guys, I've just put it into Sport Plus mode and check this. Whoa, that is so quick. Instant response. I can't believe how instant that response is. Wow. <laughs> Either this stage one tune is great or this car's great. It's, it's one of those two. Right guys, so what I'm going to do is pull over and strap a GoPro on my head and do the rest of the drive in point of view. I've had a couple of people request this, so let's try it and see how it goes. So here we go guys, I hope you could all see and I've not angled it too low, but this is the point of view of driving a BMW 1 Series. I mean, do you like it? Um, a little known fact that you guys probably don't know, but in the Asian market, China specifically, they do sell a F23, which is a one series sedan. And I do like the look of that, not gonna lie. But this uh, whole dash area has become quite dated. They have used this for such a long time, uh, over 10 years possibly. Um, glad they did a facelift on it. Sorry, not a facelift, but when the new generation came out, the interior on that car looks super good. But the instrument cluster on this car, I prefer over the instrument cluster on the new car because it's a bit dark and dingy from videos I've seen. In terms of the seating position, you do sit quite lower. Even you notice it when you've got rear passengers because they sit a little bit higher than you do and it feels like they're peering into your you know, personal space. It's strange, but uh, 
I think only F20 owners will understand. It is also quite comfy. You get this big armrest that you could lay your elbow on and also a little rest here as well for your right elbow. So you're not gonna be, let's just say, tired after a long journey. But please guys, let me know if you do prefer the GoPro style point of view drive instead of that camera pointing at me because I feel like a lot of people nowadays, uh, you know, the camera's pointed towards them. You can't see what it's like to drive the car and so I'm just trying to give a perspective of what it's like and I hope you guys appreciate that. The Shadow Edition model, it's a tasty spec. It is my spec. I've mentioned it before, but it's really good. I'm not too sure what you get as in terms of an entire list, but obviously you get blacked out elements. It's kind of Audi's Black Edition model, essentially. There are some squeaks and rattles. Uh, which I am surprised about. <laughs> I'm not expecting any squeaks from a BMW or a German vehicle branded car since they push on the premiums. But there are some squeaks and rattles from probably the lever. Oh, I forgot to mention on the Shadow Edition model, you get the Harman Kardon sound system. Uh, and that, it does make a difference. I've listened to, let's just say, the Meridian sound system in the Range Rover Sport. And since I drive a Honda Civic, the sound system compared to that car is just shocking. Sound system is quite important and you don't realize it until you actually buy a car with a proper sound system like the Harman Kardon or the Meridian sound system. Well, look at Velar just uh, stands to help. <laughs> you guys can see that because it's point of view. How good is this? We need more of this. So that's the in-depth tour and review of the 2019 BMW 1 series. Overall, I love that BMW have broke the rule book and made this car rear wheel drive. And the fact that there's such a huge community evolved around the 1 series. But look, there's no denying the Mercedes A-Class, Audi A3, the Golf, they have better features and tech. So it's going to be your choice at the end of the day. Do you go for features and tech or do you go for a bit of excitement? Thank you for watching.